Hey, how you doing? Uh, this is uh, Gary Woodruff. I'm going to take you through the electronics power we did. We're going to first start with installing the uh, power wiring into the boat. So the first thing we need to do is remove an access panel. Hopefully that will uh, gain, let us gain access. But in this boat, we have to pull the control handle off. We also have that box in the middle. And then we got to go to the back box there. So now the next thing we do is fishing the snake. Uh, basically, it's a fish tape, tape uh, to run into the boat. Okay, some people call us snakes. It's also fish. So since I had that mid-access point there for access, I'm going to use that to, to pull it through. So you can see my red tape to the left there, and I got the wire. Now, next thing to do is I got to tape the wires up to the... Uh, to the fish tape, okay. I used straight old, good old electrical tape. Think it makes things work pretty easily, okay. Good. So now I'm loading it in the box and trying to get enough cable coiled out. And now you can see I'm starting to pull the wire. I'm pulling the wire back from the control handle. Now what I do after I got the wires pulled and where I need to have them come out. I'm going to start to terminate the wires. So the first thing I'm doing is cutting the ends off square so they're nice and clean when I start to do a, uh, a strip on the wire. Okay, These are the connectors I'm using. They're Ancor, heat shrink, waterproof. Uh, they have adhesive built into it. Pretty nice connectors. In fact, probably some of the best on the market. Okay. So now what I'm doing is I am stripping the wire and putting the connector back on. I use an Ancor uh, crimper. It's a ratcheting crimper. It's made specifically for these connectors. Okay. After I do that, I use a, uh, a heat gun. And, when I was, and now, after it's all done, you can see what, what the finished product looks like. Be very, very careful with that heat gun. You can burn yourself really, really quickly. That thing is 1,000 degrees Fahrenheit and it will leave a lasting I have an imprint from a year and a half ago on my arm next thing I do is I put labels on it and that's one little thing that I do extra than everybody else tends to not do is I label every cable that I can and now I'm just doing the ground so the ground's all done now I'm redoing the power cable for the uh, the console unit you can see I'm cutting off the old connector uh, they, that was the uh, Built in, it's actually connected to the uh, Ranger uh, block behind you. And again, more heat shrink, more more using the uh, heat gun. And of course, got to do the labels. Again, I find it very handy that especially when you have to pull the boat back apart, or the customer wants to figure out what's going on. Now here is the fuse blocks. Uh, block I'll put a link in the uh, description down below so you can uh, see that okay now what I'm trying to do is figure out will those screws fit in that fit in so I can screw the thing to the wall turns out I use an in endoscope and I put put the uh, lens back behind the the wall there the wires that were coming up from the back stern of the boat to the console were really really too too close so what I have to do is I'm going to use double-sided tape and what I've done is I've uh, mounted the double-sided tape on the back of the fuse block I have found that that's it's a 3M double-sided tape so now that console area is ready to test so the next thing I've got to do is I've got to terminate and finish everything back in the electronics battery box okay uh, so I'm just going through measuring my wire length before I cut the wires okay and I've got the wires so that I've got one set cut, one set not cut, so I know pretty much which one's which, which one goes to the bow, which one goes to the console. There it is. There's the uh, full battery box for the electronics. So uh, let me see if I can get this camera in a little bit closer for you and see a little bit more details. So what we have is an Ionic uh, 125 amp hour battery. We've got a Minn Kota Precision 
What's an MK110PC, which is a single bank charger. And then we've got a breaker in the back, which is a 30 amp breaker, and that's going to control our electronic units. 30 amps should be more than sufficient because we're going to run only running three units and one active target and a network interface. The only thing left to do right now is to connect up the AC power cord and program the uh, charger to a GM cycle. Okay. All right, so now what I'm doing is I am connecting the wires up on the bow. We pulled them up through the uh, access tube there. I have everything mounted on a board. You'll see the details of that in the video that I do on the bow. It's basically I use a bow plate to, to put everything onto. So now what we're going to do is let's start testing it. All right, we're just about ready to test our power. We just turned the breaker on. So let me get these cables out of your way. These are all the console cables. They'll get labeled and sorted out in a moment. So first thing we're going to do is take our volt, handy dandy voltmeter. All right. And we want to check between these two lugs to make sure we've got 12 volts. So we put the meter on a 20 volt scale. Okay. And then I've got the wrong probes, but that's okay. Uh, I'm trying to put the meter so you can actually see the thing. So put it on positive, put it on negative, and we're showing 13.01. So we know our fuse panel is good. We're getting power up to there. Uh, if I go to the bow, I can also check and see if my network box is turned on. And uh, I did that a few minutes ago, and it, yes, indeed, it, it is turned on. Basically, you look at the power light. So we're pretty much good to go. This is a major hurdle in your uh, in the installation of actually having power and working power. It's all connected womb to tomb. And the, like I say, the only thing left to do is really to uh, hook up the uh, put a, a Y cable on the on the con uh, power cords. So, all right. All right. All right, next thing we're going to do, we're going to take the old fuse block that was uh, originally hooked up to the Ranger, old Ranger power di distribution panel, which uh, used the boat, the boat starting battery for the electronics. Uh, we're going to put it into the fuse block here. If you notice, we connected that console unit to this position right here. Okay. So, so what we're going to do is we'll take a pair of pliers, wiggle this out gently, and it comes right out, okay? I have turned the breaker back off. So all I do is just push it in here. That's done. Once that's done, we can uh, take the cover, which I've labeled with depth sounder, okay? And snap it on. Now the power distribution's all done. I've already done the same thing up on the bow. And uh, so we're ready to go with power. So at this point, we can then proceed with doing the final mount on the console, doing the uh, rest of the insulation on the bow, and I still have to do a little bit in the battery box. All right, this is the last hole for this access panel. Once this is put in place, we're, we have all the power buttoned up for the console. Okay, you notice I, ha I got a couple of corner screws here. I ended up having to use a 90 degree power driver or drill, and then I use a regular one for the other. The, the difference is the 90 degree doesn't have a torque setting. The standard one has a torque uh, on it. So basically, I, I, you don't wanna, when you're driving screws in the fiberglass first, you don't wanna go high speed. You notice when I put that one on the 90 there, uh, it's sometimes a little hard to control the speed. So you got to really, you should really seriously slow down when you're putting screws into glass, fiberglass. And if you start to hear it crunching, then there's a good chance you're going to strip the thing. So you got to put it in slow. When it starts to feel tight, what I would suggest is take a regular screwdriver, okay, and just go back and do the final tighten. Okay. So, sometimes you can, sometimes you can't. But basically hand tighten, you don't over tighten it. Over tighten it, it will cause it to strip. And then when it strips, you've got a couple options to repair the hole. 
but the console rigging initially is is or, or so shall we say the wiring pulling wires are done we just have to modify this console piece as i mentioned before and then uh install the mountain and that console will be done